you've landed on planet 412. I'll be your captain of sorts as we navigate this strange cryptid filled world. Join me on the quest for truth through the strange, mysterious, and supernatural. This is Planet 412. And welcome to Planet 412, specifically our Supernatural Town Hall session. I am Matt Emps from Planet 412, and we have our resident Sasquatchers, JC and Andrew. And then, of course, from Codega's Codex of Curiosity, Rye. Everybody, hello. I wanted to real quick uh, go to the uh, chat. And welcome everybody that is here. My wife Stacy uh, is helping moderate tonight. Just to let everybody else know, the four of us here uh, on the screen are also going to be moderating uh, if need be. Uh, hello, Tammy, Andy Southpaw, uh, Tim Richardson. Uh, I know Tyler's in there, uh, Karen Root. And everybody else, uh, uh, we will uh, get to everyone. But guys, how are we doing tonight? I am doing fantastic. I uh, just literally finished another interview with uh, another uh, podcaster and slipped in just before uh, we started our uh, our live here. And uh, I'm doing good. It's been really hot. Um, things are great. And... Yeah, that's about it. What about uh, you, uh, JC and Andrew? I'm doing great. I love this. This is like one of my favorite nights of the week. Seeing you guys all being in here. This is so much fun. Chat, everybody. I love being in the chat with everyone. Um, I am dropping ban hammers tonight, though. So uh, first person, I'm banning myself. Give me one second. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, great. Everybody looks good. Uh, Drew, what are you up Drew? to? Drew? You are Batman tonight. I can barely see you. Yeah, no, nothing ever works for me. So this is about the best that I can do. Any yeah, any right. higher light, then my background disappears. So other than that, I'm doing fantastic. Like JC said, we always look forward to this. And, you know, it's been something that I've been thinking about all day. It's my day off. I was going to build a desk for the occasion, but I was talked out of it. Was it an easy and, talking out of? Yeah, yeah, it was. It's kind of a daunting task. And and Matt, how about yourself? What's going on? What's new? Well, you know what? I will let you guys know in a second, but more importantly for me, and I think everybody that's here, uh, Blast of East just jumped in as well, and Brother Heck. Um, how is Jensen doing, Drew? Uh, thank you for asking. Uh, he's doing he's doing really well. He's, you know, back to his chipper self. Um, nothing, yeah on the external side is very worrisome. We still have to do follow-ups and most likely have another MRI done. But in the meantime, he's, he's uh, looking a lot better and he's in a way better mood. So again, right. thank you to everyone who has helped in any way with, with that situation. We couldn't have asked for um, anything like you guys. Awesome. We're, 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 we were uh, happy and blessed to, to help. And uh, again, hello to everybody. Our district Amber as well just jumped in uh, for me, um, you know, just getting everything going on just to let everybody know, aside from uh, from StreamYard uh, as well. We have a couple other uh, formats. I am on pilled.net and on um on, uh, I just went blank, uh, Rumble as well. I'm going to be adding another uh, group of other kinds as well. Um, I know you guys are on. So before we start, I just want to let everybody know any um, type of, of uh, you know, donations or anything that I make on any live streams for Planet 412 for the, the forthcoming, you know, future I am going to be putting that towards new equipment. You know, I, I announced on my community page, I announced in some of my live streams that I am in in, in severe need of, of uh, you know, some, some equipment. I need to get a microphone and some other things. I need a new computer. Um, so 
I, I have the ability to uh, get things at a, at a pretty good price. Uh, I will share uh, again uh, in the chat tonight the link for, I have a Planet 412 uh, Amazon uh, link. So if anybody wants to, to help out, you know, there's other channels that do that. I was the one told by about four or five other channels, dude, ask, ask your people to help out. So I would appreciate that. And yes, Stacey, I am using my daughter's Chromebook. So that is why I, I can barely do any editing anymore. It used to work. Now it doesn't really do any editing anymore. So um, that's what I'm using, which people are absolutely blown away and uh, shocked that a Chromebook is what I use. I was using something else, but it stopped working. So, uh, and I have a donation from Blast the Beast. Uh, so let me yeah, throw thanks. that. Thank you very much. That is very generous of you. Uh, I, I cannot uh, uh, tell you how much I appreciate that. Um, just to let everybody know, uh, also, if, guys, you guys are on other formats too. While we're starting, you want to let everyone know what other formats that you're on sure i'll go um yeah like youtube is pretty much the the main one for me um i'm on youtube uh, but i'm also that's my video format but my audio format i'm on wherever you can find me it's uh, <laughs> which is you know pretty much everyone else spotify uh apple uh i don't know chrome i don't know <laughs> what do i say chromebook oh my god Podbean. i'm like there's uh, right here yeah, I, I messed it up all that, but that, that's where you can find me. Um, I'm almost at my, you know, we we always have these goals that we set out for each other. And so it, it's, you know, I'm almost ready to achieve one of my goals, which I'm pretty, pretty pumped about. And uh, and I just want to thank everybody for, for you know, subscribing, following and, you know, following these guys as well. I, I want to thank these guys, everyone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> these ones and this one yes so i just want to thank everybody you know i really appreciate everyone's effort and i i really do enjoy our tuesdays agreed uh what we are week? going to be talking about everybody tonight as you notice uh what is up and uh, we'll leave rise link up and then i'll throw my my two sasquatchers link up we are going to be talking about the harp uh uh weapons of mass destruction basically tonight um you know a lot of strange things going on uh, uh they are directed energy weapons they are a real thing uh there has been quite a bit uh, in the news about them if anybody looked at our our thumbnail we had a pretty cool thumbnail with you know a ufo throwing a laser down but if you notice what it was throwing down at was a blue roof Strangely mm. enough, if anyone has paid attention to the news and to things on the internet about these directed energy weapons, there have been whole neighborhoods completely wiped off the face of the earth. But yet in the middle of them will be like one house. And of all colors, the roof is blue and is the only house there. So with that comment, you know, I'll turn it over to, I think, which one of you, was it Drew or JC who brought this subject? I think it was JC, right? You brought this one up? Oh, boy. Uh, I, I did suggest it, yes. <laughs> what do we want to start on? We start with harp. Um, so yeah, what does harp a, even... Yeah, so tell us about harp, JC. Okay, so what does HARP even stand for? I have it right here in front of me. So it stands for High Frequency Active Oral Research Program. Hmm. Uh, and there's actually a lot of conspiracy, well, a lot of theories. Be careful here, a lot of theories about this. Um, but what does it actually do? So it uh, analyzes the ionosphere, which is a portion of like the upper atmosphere, stretches about 53 miles above the Earth. So it's about 370 miles from where we are here on the surface uh, and it was originally meant supposedly to understand that sphere uh, and play a role in transmitting transmitting radio signals so let's talk about a couple natural disasters that a lot of people associate with this harp um, and i'm talking outside of the dues which are the direct energy weapons yeah but uh, we have the 2006 philippines landslide uh, was blamed on harp uh, the theory was that it was being tested. They chose the Philippines, which is already prone to natural disasters such as landslides. And 
it was activated and you had that massive landslide, which I don't know if everyone remembers. I vaguely remember that landslide. I would have been in high school still when that happened. Um, the tw- 20, uh, 2011 Japan earthquake and tsunami is another one that's attributed to harp. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, devastating earthquakes, tsunamis, maybe some of the worst imagery we've seen on television, right? I can't, you know, outside of like 9 11, that sticks out big time for me in my head, just seeing all that footage and that. Another one is the 2013 more Oklahoma tornado outbreak, uh, was supposedly also caused by harp. Some other ones, you know, the the Haitian earthquake of 2010. I think we can tie in a lot of conspiracies in into that. You know, if you want to talk about uh, presidents and agencies and and other parties that may have been involved in that, uh, the U.S. Air Force does contend that it is a legitimate research apparatus. Mm-hmm. But people and but just just to clarify though, sure. so. There has, prior to HARP even existing, there have been experiments on the atmosphere, the different atmospheres of the Earth, right? Like, this isn't the first, and of course, it's not going to be the last. Um, Rosalie Bertel had warned about military weapons as far back as 1996 uh, about HARP being a weapon or being utilized as a weapon. And what better weapon do you have than a weather weapon? Right? I mean, if you can control the weather, you can control commerce. You can control uh movement, you know, of people well, like, around the globe. Well if we're talking if we're talking about uh um controlling the weather, you know that that's not that's not unknown. It's completely known. And we're not I'm not talking harp though, but I'm talking cloud seeding you know cloud seeding um you know operation popeye in vietnam also you know in where i live we have some major hailstorms. So we're back in canada we had some major hailstorms, and there were insurance companies paying cloud seeders you know um like literally advertising in the paper for this so you know if they say no we don't control the weather yeah you do 100 percent. so like you know, if we take it back just to this basic Yes, there is. So now if we start updating that to, you know, ionosphere um, manipulation by putting high electrical, you know, um, waves into that, th- there's a good chance. I- I'm, I'm kind of thinking maybe an earthquake is a stretch, but winds and storms is, is something that I-, I can get behind. Definitely. Well, a-, a lot of people say that the fracking that is being done um, is being used as a method to create earthquakes uh by destabilizing you know the shelves under the earth and And it has and we can go all the way back you know not to interrupt you jc but we can go all the way back to one of our favorite people that we discuss in here nikolai or nicholas tesla or nikolai tesla about making that earthquake uh, uh machine that he went to that uh uh construction site connected it to that beam next thing you know you know the, the everything is shaking there's a literal earthquake police were called in and he quickly just kind of stuck in his pocket and did did walked away and it really worked so the, the the ability of the government to do things uh, be it fracking or whatever machine um you know they have these abilities they 100 percent can control the weather uh you you look at these these antenna farms that they have all over the United States. And if you've ever watched video of these things start up, it's like watching something out of a science fiction movie. You know, these antennas go up and all these, you know, elect- electric, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, little lightning bolts kind of connect everywhere. And then you look above, up in the clouds, and there are strange kind of you know, striations and, and lines above them, and they are able to control these things. But, you know, as the the uh, title of tonight's uh, live stream spoke about, the one that is the most disturbing is these, uh, you know, directed energy weapons. And, and again, the one thing that is, you know, really grabbing everyone's attention is this 
ability of these blue colored roofs and other things to keep that energy weapon from affecting them. You know, uh, I'm not real sure as to why. Does anybody, you know, uh, have any reasoning as to why that happens? Well, one of the things that I have stumbled upon in my research today is that there are blue colored lasers that are seen during these events and that there were blue colored lasers spotted in the sky in and around Maui during those fires. And um, I just found a, a an, an interesting link. I cannot see if the video actually works or not because it's a it's a strange link. But I'm gonna send it to you guys in the chat because this gentleman uh, put this to the test with some uh, colored fabrics, and he has a yellow, red, blue, and a green that are all like singed and burned from a blue laser and so that he says the demo is at the 16 minute mark so i'm going to share this with everybody and we can all kind of discover this and stumble upon it together but um so it seems to be some type of laser activity is associated with this color blue being unharmed by these things and to build on what you guys said earlier, uh, a very recent and very public example of government weather control is the Olympics in China. That was a uh, mm-hmm. that was a very public and actual thing that mm-hmm. was discussed and accepted. So it's not even kind of like a lunacy thing that we're talking about when we say this stuff. Uh, it's very much right there, and China was not shy about it. No, no, not at all, and and like. You know, what's coming out and what is public is only a drop in the bucket of what's really out and available. You know, like uh, like what we're showing is only a, like, just a drop in the bucket of what is what we really have. Like if you believe if people believe that is all that we have, then then, you know, you got another thing coming. And, you know, uh, Britain was just showing their. I think it's called an L, uh, what's it called? An LD, uh, an L do, you know, because they call DW for do, which is directed energy weapon. But this is like a laser directed energy weapon. Um, and they they broadcasted it almost. They, they were showing them shooting down a like a, a missile or a bomb kind of thing. And, and they they burnt right through it. So if they're if the military is showing you their hand, they're only showing you what what they want you to see. You know, there is something so much more. So if they're actually claiming that they have directed energy weapons, well, then we have directed energy weapons that are much more powerful than what we're being shown. Mm-hmm. And the, the, actually directed energy weapons and even weather manipulation, you can go, I mean, at least on record, you can go as far back as the 1946. Uh, the Soviet Union was looking for some weapon that they could pulse electromagnetic energy into the ground and raise the earth's temperature and what they were planning on doing was they were going to boil the united states alive i guess is what they wanted to do right um and you know again i i've mentioned diglaka on here a few times which is the not the the bell the the famous nazi bell that was uh, yes they were attempting multiple different things to do with you know not you know time travel um interdimensional travel and warping but there was also uh studies done using frequencies that the bell was supposedly creating that would completely alter the uh weather and the terrain of the earth so basically turning it into like a venus you know no atmosphere everyone burned alive is what uh the studies on dead glock were so just interesting um you know now that we have these catastrophes happening and some of them do seem very localized and purposeful uh mm-hmm. you're going going back to all these pictures and these videos on tiktok by the way were taken down hmm. they were removed extremely and that's and that's the reason we know about it, right? Because they were taken down. If they were just left up, it'd have been like, okay, it's just another TikTok trend. But they were being removed. And 
So more, more kind of like way out in left field, but I will say this Mountain Dew prior to the Maui fires, you know, created a uh, Maui burst, you know, it, it kind of, is that, Mountain, is that real? <laughs> that's real. And Baja blast, you know, and Baja well, okay. Baja. But Baja blast is good. But ba- well, <laughs> okay. I'm the Mountain Dew connoisseur. Uh, Baja blast is 20 years old now. Uh, okay. And the, okay Mountain Dew, let, let, the Maui mur- burst. Let's go to the, the Maui, Maui burst. one. Mm-hmm. That way, that is new. That had that did happen right around the time of the fires. And and, wow. and is, did you know that, uh, you know, Pepsi's second biggest shareholder is BlackRock. Oh, 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 just throw that, that out That's, there. Just of course it is. There. I, I'm not. Yeah, but BlackRock, I guess, it's kind of owns just about everything. But just throwing that out there. I did not know that. Yeah, going to stand the flavor, and that it was like the best pineapple soda, but. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I never even heard of it till now. It's my first time hearing about it. You got to go check. You know, it. just just for everybody that is not again familiar with uh, what Mountain directed Real. energy weapons are, they are such as lasers. They use energy fired at the speed of light. These weapons can produce force that ranges from deterrent to damaging to destructive. Many countries, including the U.S., are researching their use. Obviously, we're touching on that tonight. Because they use energy instead of bullets, missiles, directed energy weapons can be less expensive per shot and have virtually unlimited firing power. However, the long-term health effects of these weapons are unclear. They also generally have shorter range than conventional weapons and weather conditions such as fog and storms can make directed energy weapons less effective. So there you go. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I I was uh very surprised that like if we're gonna talk Maui, okay, we're talking at these directed energy weapons. What kind of fire can can melt uh engine blocks, you know, and becoming aluminum, you know, I know a there is a slight crossover, like when you actually look at wildfire temperatures and the melting point of aluminum, there is a slight crossover in the temperature where it can get hot enough to melt aluminum. But, but this aluminum's running like rivers, you know, like, like if you're just starting to melt something, it's not going to run like a river. It's, you know, and it has to be perfect conditions, but it wasn't like there was a lot of forest to burn. You know, these are, these are cars that are burning. Why are cars burning? You know, and, and there's like engine blocks are melting. Like this is like, even if we want to, even if we want to throw do aside, this this these fires were unnatural you know everything about what happened in maui and i know we're a little bit late to the game but everything was unnatural at this uh location um andrew what do you think (laughs) um you're right that the atmosphere has to be extremely hot to pull something like that off uh i don't know if anybody in the chat or any of you guys chatting with me have ever uh, been as lucky as lucky or unlucky as i have been to have your car burst a flame while you're driving it. But I actually have had the uh, pleasure of the firsthand experience of darting out of my car and watching it uh, burn to the ground uh, to the point that uh, the pavement underneath it, it welded mm. to it. And mm. the pavement was otherwise okay. And the engine block was okay. And there was still a, a frame of a car that was towed away that I had to go take care of. Uh, it didn't incinerate, like it didn't incinerate it, and it certainly didn't look anything like the the car damage that you see in the photos from Maui. And there's an interesting thing that I found today. I totally forgot to send it to you, Rye. I'm going to send it yeah, to you yeah. right now. Okay, I'll I want everybody up. to know that the one thing that we kind of pulled out for this was the cars being the color blue and the umbrella being the color blue. And uh, it was Oprah Winfrey's house was the only one untouched in her area that was also had a blue roof, right? Um, I found a picture today that was used to discredit or debunk this. And it has a house that is left in an entire city block of just destruction and it's completely okay and the roof is actually red 
And so they said, you know, here is a house that is still standing and it doesn't have blue anywhere. So you guys are silly. Now, when we have this photo pulled up, I want everybody to take a look that it is like clearly CGI. It's a fake picture of a fake house. It totally is. Yeah. I'll, I'll get that up in two seconds here. Sorry, I'm just. Uh, oh, you got it. You got it, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I also uh, I sent something to our uh, our inner circle for you as well. And oh. I, I'm the resident sharer. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> Computer isn't working. I can't get. No, no, no. I, I, I like that. I like that. That I have like. He's on show. a Chromebook, man. <laughs> I like that. I have that. Uh, that's. You can't uh, have more I'm than the, two tabs. I'm the open. sharing guy. All it's right. Actually, it just reminded me. I'm not connected to my router like I usually do, and I'm not dropping out. So it's actually fantastic. But yeah, so I'm also a little colorblind. I'll visit that right I, away. Yeah, I get made fun of by my family, in particular my wife, all the time about some of the colors that I don't see quite clearly, and uh, I had to like double check to make sure because the color of this roof doesn't look red to me at all. But they say in the description that it's that it's a red colored roof. To me, I thought it looked brown, but I, that's just semantics. Yeah, it looks on a little bit brown. It looks so a little brown I, to me too. <laughs> I, okay, so. I didn't know if my, my color blindness was kicking in. Sorry, I, think I, had I, made fun I, had a, I had a little bit of uh, some issues, so but I'm sharing it here right now. Resident USA Today uh, uh, article that says, no directed energy weapons caused Maui fires. Of course it comes from USA Today. Yeah, yeah, please USA please today. trust all your, uh, your friendly neighborhood. Uh, uh, please trust the Zog media. Yes. Here we go. That uh -huh. is the most <laughs> digitally touched up photograph I've yeah. ever seen yeah, in it's my entire perfect. life. It looks like it came out of uh, a uh, like a, a video game. Like that looks it, it's pretty sad. Yeah, it's, it's Call of Duty. <laughs> or or they took the previous or they took the they took this photo and just superimposed prior because like there should be at least some damage some melting some things you know <laughs> affected like like this water tank over here you can see there's a yeah. water tank on top of the roof you know if you have that much high of heat it should be melting somehow there should be mm -hmm. some sort of but no well the wood uh the wood uh, uh a deck in the back i mean come on it's not burned yeah right yeah. right they said well, that's the argument that they said that our house is made 100% and completely out of wood. We did not do anything to this house to prevent this from happening. Like okay. they, the Mr. arguments that Mrs. they make Jones. just Jones. beats for beat are like, well, you guys are wrong for thinking this is strange because we didn't do anything to this house. So. But even the shadowing looks suspicious to me. If you it look, does. like the shadow from the house that bleeds over onto the deck. So you can see that's from right to left, but that's also bleeding into the ocean next to it. And that house is not tall enough to cascade that kind of shadow. No. So, well, the, the, well the, the truck is cascading a shadow this long. You know, if, we, if we're looking at this, this truck is bringing this much of a shadow, which is pretty, pretty big, but you know, so the sun is pretty low. I think I think it could go into the it, it could go maybe to this location, maybe to but it it wouldn't yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It goes pretty far out. I'm getting yeah. like a liminal spaces feeling. Like it just this seems surreal. Like just looking at this photo, and I know you can say that about disaster photos, right? But I don't know. Something about this just seems too perfect. It does, it does. Then, now, yeah, maybe maybe you could what argue is the they are made out of. Is, is that wood or is that you know? I would love if it was vinyl siding and it looks all perfect. You know, It'd just be, be like, peeled back and yeah. No vinyl would it definitely melt if it melts from a, a grill being too close from it. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. would. And, 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 and if this house, if this house is completely, completely gone, you know, like gutted, yeah. there's nothing standing of this house. Like this house, uh, 
Yeah, like uh, if you had a, a, a grill fire going in the in the barbecue and, and the, uh, you know, just everything mm-hmm. at the end is all white. And, and these know, palm uh, trees are showing signs of, of being, um, you know, burnt as well. So that means that flame was sure. huge. That flame yeah. was huge. Yeah. I don't know. So, so, yeah, this photo is used as a way to debunk what we're uh, suggesting occurred. And mm. to me, it looks so disingenuous and and fake and as somebody that has spent 20 years in photoshop so digitally touched with that it's unreal and that leads me to suspect that there's some type of ulterior motive there trying to pull us away from what we're looking at which is truthfully something that you know i is it is it harp it, it's unclear and it could have been an accident like uh in i believe it was 2015 or 14 um a i believe it is the uh uh university of Ala- alaska fairbanks took over harp so it's not even operated by the government anymore uh, on paper you know that could just be something that they did to then blame all future experiments on a college and take eyes off of the government. I think, but I think Jesse Ventura did an episode about that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if anybody ever watched that show, but <laughs> I did, I did as well. And so this is something that Jesse, the body Ventura has been preaching for, I mean, it's gotta be 10 years at least. So, and at, people really like to discredit him and his beliefs, but he's uh, standing on the top of the perch for conspiracy yeah. theorists in public. And he was also he was a governor too, not right. just a pro wrestler. He was a governor. One of those is more real than the other, and I'll let you guys decide. <laughs> right? Do you want me adding me on to the screen uh, again? I, I don't know that that's the one that you shared, so I'm just pulling pulling it up. Because uh, no, that I, one I, obviously you have other other buildings. No, that could actually be, you know, wherever the, the, if if it was in this picture, you know, wherever it was hitting, it could not you know, possibly have not hit that area. Uh, you it, know, it, 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 it definitely looks like it avoided this area. You know, like let's say you're going along with this. Let's say it's a laser, and you just kind of do 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 do. You know. Uh, it it's it, you know this house here seems very sus like as to why this one didn't have anything happen to it you know everything else is burnt to a crisp this one is still standing yeah and then you have like and a whole block somebody's house that's there possibly that worked for good yeah. for harm for the government right i also sent you a picture in our inner circle of an actual, you know, directed energy weapon to give it some people an idea of what they look like. Yes, yeah. yes, I, I have this one open too. So this is, um, yeah, okay. I'll open this up if people want to see this. Uh, look at me a second here, just to share this in two seconds. Okay. So, oh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Here we go. Here we go. All right, everyone. So, oh yeah, and it might not look like much, but guys, that is an extremely large, uh, uh, you know, uh, built laser or directed energy weapon. As you can see, the platform it's on, it, it moves it, you know, at different different kinds of directions, it goes up, down, every yeah. which way. I uh, think this one here is more for like taking down, yeah, taking down missiles and whatnot. This is what this sure. one is specifically meant for. The and Iron Dome. The, the ones that would be causing, you know, what happened in Maui or things were going to be in satellites. That's going to be things that are going to be in, in space. That's a, a great, uh, you know, uh, description of how these things work as well. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm a little bit too young for this. Um, I think Andrew probably is right. I don't know. Maybe uh, Matt, maybe, <laughs> but this, if everybody remembers uh, Ronald Reagan, his star Wars. Yeah, where I do. We, I do 100%. He was going to have the laser array in space mm-hmm. to protect the United States from Soviet weapons. 
ex- completely entirely based on these direct energy weapons. He wasn't mm-hmm. launching missiles from satellites. It was going to be lasers, which it never came to fruition that we're aware of. Yeah, I was about to say that um, we're aware of. I, I think it that totally- we're aware of. Yeah, but it was talked about and was like a legitimate thing. And even um, Kissinger up until his recent death was still talking about laser defense weapons and things like that, you know, which that guy, but that's a whole nother thing is he lived of course to be like 105,000 years old, you know, like they always do. But um, I saw, I saw, and not to change the subject real quick here, but ND Southpaw was messaging, uh, mentioning the um the smokehouse creek fires which are happening still right now in texas uh it is the largest and most devastating fires that texas has ever experienced and i i like there's one um let me find it here there's one quote about these fires that really you know hits home a little bit and it's that a lot of these fires were popping up in like blips It wasn't just one massive fire. They were starting in small areas. So basically like a laser pointer, right? Like we said on that image, click the laser pointer on certain places and you're starting the fires. Yeah, this. So I can see that right right here in this comment. That's exactly what happened in Canada, too. There was a lot of fires in, I believe it was in in Quebec, uh, Quebec area that like the radar imagery, it almost started just like instantly. Now, I'm not going to say it was due because it very it very much could be. It very much could be. But there were capturing people setting um, forests on fire. Like this is something that is and 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 they are climate change activists. These are the people doing this. That's a that's a whole yeah, other well, other bag of worms. But I'm not saying been, mm-hmm. that's been the thing with the California wildfires for a long time is that they've caught people starting the fires that were climate activists. Right. Yeah. Yeah, like that's that's been going on for a while that these climate action groups, these NGOs are paying their members and college students to go out and start fires. I Hey, I'll give you I can give you a firsthand example. When I went to IUP, I joined the eco group, the uh, the environmental college organization group for my campus and the kind of things I became vice president. The president, I won't mention his name on here because I don't remember his last name, so I can't call him out. But um, he wanted to do all these wacky things, like things that would cause fires on campus, things that would injure people. Like it was very much a uh, minimi, you know, a minimal terrorist organization on campus, right? Like, like your environmental organization that wanted to buy pig blood to dump on students coming out of the library. Like that's what is that? That's not. And, you know, eventually I graduated and resigned and left after that. But the kind of things like people think, Oh, you know, there's no grand conspiracies, dude. It goes the whole way down to just like students at a school wanting to do things like that. It exists at every yeah. level. Your your neighbor, <laughs> not to so distrust, but your neighbor could want to do things like that. So to keep that in mind. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I'm sorry. All I was gonna say is real quick is you know, we always go back to how they speak about, you know, little snippets of real true information is always brought through the movies through Hollywood. You go all the way back to one of my favorite uh, movies called Real Genius, directed energy weapon utilized in that in that movie in a plane, and they practice with that weapon on campus, which goes through the 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 lead shield and goes through the the quad, goes through statues and trees and all that, and then later on in the in the movie they load it up onto a I think a C-130 or something and they're utilizing that and practicing with it, uh, which destroys a guy's house. They set it up the, the misfire. All the way back in the 80s, you know, uh, you know, uh, they, they have real genius. I think it was Val Kilmer was the guy in that movie mm. talking about, you know, directed energy weapons back in the time of Ronald Reagan. You know, so again, little pieces of information, Hollywood, people think it's a, it's a big joke, but they really are giving little pieces of information through. I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. 
no, uh, I was just going to say that uh, if the kids at Indiana University of Pennsylvania are in on some type of scam like that, imagine <laughs> what larger organizations with way bigger stakes like government have to do this kind of stuff. And while you were talking, I saw a comment here from Karen Root that says Texas fires proved to be telephone pole, smaller fires due to a massive wind. I'm not going to say I don't believe you and I don't live in Texas, but there is something else going on in Texas right now. And that is the uh, border crisis that up until, you know, these fires were was all anyone could talk about when it came to Texas. And mm -hmm. so suddenly now we have all of these fires and people are distracted. And now people talk about fires with Texas. And we're not talking about that border thing that everybody was arguing yeah. about for the last several weeks to months. Diversion. Uh, so it's one of those things where is this, like JC just said, is this a diversion? Uh, regardless of who started the fire or what started the fire, there seems to be now a seismic change in yeah. publicity for the area that is never let a good, convenient. Never let a good tragedy go to waste, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah, Spring, uh, uh, he, he's one of our uh, fellow uh, Planet 412ers and, and Town Hall session. Uh, normals from across the pond, and he has a comment here, strange one here years ago. I saw an interesting cloud formation. I'm always taking photo vids of the sky on playback. There was a weird whistling metallic sound. Never heard it while recording. You know, you, you hear of these these strange, and they call them sky quakes or strange noises. Mm -hmm. and, and again, you're seeing more and more pictures of strange uh, uh, you know, cloud formations and things like that. There are reasons that these, you know, anomalies are popping up and the clouds are, are grabbing these. Just trying to. Anyone? <laughs> <Dad here. laughs> I was, I was waiting to see, I was waiting to see how long the silence would go. I think every one of us were there just trying to catch up on chats after we were making points. Yeah, and, and, and then there's me trying doing. to talk, and I have my mic muted. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, no, it, it's – yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys handle that because now I'm I'm totally lost. I'm actually going to gonna grab pictures of some of these uh, and send them to you, these cloud anomalies. Yeah, and again, please, please. And, and you know, which comes into effect of my UFO cloud anomaly, which I saw, but, uh, yeah. You know what's yeah, interesting – if we're talking cloud anomalies in England, uh, we talk about this all the time, but it's because it had a pretty profound effect on, on me. We did an episode of our show with Nick Hayes, and he mm -hmm. is from England. And basically what he does is he captures what appear to be biological sky creatures that are uh, only visible through playback on ultraviolet light scenarios and he has a website where he has all of these uh images and videos and stuff and he just put a book out not too long ago uh so when i hear that my mind just for location alone kind of jumps to way different things of what you know as far as possibilities that 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 could be uh, but you know that's just because i have that like deep-seated memory of this dude just blowing our minds with this stuff. Yeah. It was gr uh, we gotta be careful not to bring up the sky beasts here. We did a live stream on yes, the sky beast did. already. <laughs> yeah, thanks Susie for calling that out, even though she missed it. <laughs> you can look that up. Um, I think another thing that we need to, you know, we're talking a lot about like things that are happening here on the surface in the atmosphere, but think about how easy it would be to do things in like the ocean, right? You have an unlimited power source, something like a laser weapon. Imagine focusing that in the ocean. And boiling the oceans. Is that what you're talking Bo about? Well, boiling the ocean, but like theoretically, and I'm not, I don't have a master's or doctorate in, in laser technology here, but 
would a would a high powered laser beam travel further in water than it would on land? Because on land, you're going to hit impediments, right? You're going to hit right. mountains. You're going to hit buildings through the water. You uh, would think I, that it would have. I, a, I actually think the water would refract it. It would cause it to think? splinter. Yes. You know what? Right. Well, maybe I that's even worse. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I feel like you have a like maybe a pure, unfiltered unmoving water that you could do it but as soon as that water starts to shift whether you got waves or any um um impurities in it it will cause it to refract somehow and you will mm. cause some issues See, in my opinion in my opinion yeah water, was, water displacement well, well i you was could, thinking I'm sorry, sorry go ahead matt no, go Matt. to effect you could have almost like a a you know and the ability of the water to to make it that much stronger almost like a magnifying glass, or you could have it, like you said, rye refract it or, or cause it not to be uh, utilized in, in the way that they were hoping. Bill Rigby uh, threw a question to me, Matt, do you believe the clouds, anom the cloud anomalies are natural or man-made per se? Well, Bill, you look at what is on the screen right here, and that is one of the most well-known cloud anomalies uh, they don't uh, normally have those types of uh, lines and 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 natural types of cloud formations. So that, that my opinion, man-made. Some of the ones again, if you go over those those antenna farms, you see those. Just it looks like lines, almost like lines on a football field, but closer together. Right over those antenna farms, those are man-made. So um, I, my belief is when you see things like this. Or, or the, you know, the, the lines that look like something out of a, you know, radio frequency or something. Obviously, those are man-made. Go ahead. Now, okay. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Go no, ahead. I was, just, I was going to speak just towards the water, the, <laughs> the water thing again with the lasers. Uh, I, I think that the refractory would obviously. But what about like an electromagnetic weapon in the water, right? Because now you're conducting the energy. Mm -hmm. No, th so, no, that's possible. No, I don't I don't I don't know where I'm going with this at all. <laughs> but take a place like Salt Lake City, you know, right on the lake. Salt Lake. Mm -hmm. What happens if you drop uh, an EMP into the lake instead of in the air? Does that I think it would probably I, this, most salt, salt will amplify certain things. Salt can amplify certain things, but I don't know. I actually feel though, if you put an EMP into a lake, especially saltwater lake, I think it would almost uh, reverse. Like, 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 like it'll contain it more. Like it'll be more contained within that area. Gotcha. So I don't, I don't think it's going to do that. Um, but, but like, okay, so we were talking about crazy, crazy cloud formations. I'm just going to show you one. This is a natural one that occurred very often. Um, th this isn't the best photo I could find, but I'll explain it. But go, go ahead, Andrew, while I get this ready. I was going to say, um, if the the effect from dropping that into the salt lake, for instance, is then kind of contained, uh, it would still presumably maybe heat up. And perhaps that would be the goal is uh, atmospheric mm. change, uh, climate yeah, change, yeah. man-made, you know, to, um, I don't know, to what, to what end, I don't know. But that could essentially be something that you use to warm up the waters above their natural temperatures I, I i can't seem to find sorry i apologize i can't seem to find a good picture of what i'm looking for um we had this weather phenomena in in calgary canada where it was called the chinook and that's when this warmer air would come in and you would get a wall of clouds like literally it was like a wave and it would just come in it was just a distinct line and a wave but it wasn't like that picture that we showed pre previously it was like, like it looked like waves, like it's like no, that. No, no, it was more like a wall. It was just like I called it a wave because it was just like this big, huge cloud coming in, and it was just, it was more like rounded, and it would come in, and it was a solid uh, thing that would come in. But what you had shown me, like you had given me to share, is really weird. It's th that is like almost too. It just doesn't uh, that that can't exist almost. It's like how does that how does that happen? That can't happen. I'm gonna get a picture. I'll send you that I took myself. I've got to mm -hmm. find it on my phone. It was a black line that I took a picture that was going as far as the eye could see. That was above the clouds. It looked like a black shadow, perfect line. And I always wonder what the heck 
on earth could cause that. But before I looked that up, PJ Jean 63, what about the cities up in the clouds people take pictures of? Right, I threw that in our, our inner circle. If you could throw that up. That, okay. You know, people talk about these. They say that they're, you know, they're optical. Shambhala. I think there's a little more to some of these than, than uh, you know, uh, uh, just an optical well, illusion. I don't know your guys' thoughts on these. Yeah, this was, uh, th wasn't this like in China or something like that, yeah. this picture? I I, I know we're, we're, we're transferring off of uh, dues, which is fine. You know, this is kind of natural. I just let it say go natural. Um, but this is this is interesting. It is. It's very interesting. And it gets the mind thinking, you know, because some people, you know, you get the, the normal comments of, oh, no, it's just, you know, whatever, you know, Venus refracting light from gas I had yesterday or, you know, whatever. <laughs> and then there's other reasons. You know, I, I think there could be a little more to this. So it's a very interesting picture. It's a well-known one. Mm -hmm. um, Two more seconds. Here we go. Got it. Thank you. Approaching blue beam and holographic tech, yeah. And this yeah. is a very well-known one. This was on the news. Uh, you saw people recording it with multiple phones. They showed different phones to get. It really is freak. I mean, that's a little more, in my opinion, than optical illusion when you have like 50 people recording different phones all seeing the same thing. Yes, I agree. I agree. You know, what is that? Like, what is going on? What is now? Is this reality's bleeding over? W what exactly? Or is this really here? And, you know, we just. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Is, well, it, you, is, there, a, is there another you, photo of this, like a zoomed out one? I was going to yeah, say, how maybe. high? How high is this as far as. It, where is it in the atmosphere? I mean, there's obviously no mountain formations that would look like this, so you couldn't zoom this, in at like a mountain. I, I thought this was in China, so it was in China. Yeah. I'll see if I can. I'll see if you guys continue. I'll see if I can find more. Um, uh, in the meantime, while you look for that, uh, I had a. I was hoping that we had some Aussies in the chats because. Uh, there was, while I was doing research, a, another harp that was supposedly put in Australia. And Australia is obviously known for their many bushfires. And so I was hoping that we could get some insight from somebody who lived there as to uh, when this device was installed and how many fires they've had since then this, this is something that is popping up kind of all over the globe and there's deeper conspiracies i guess that are attached to that that i'm not well versed in because i just found out about this stuff today but no. the uh the australian one seems pretty legit there's a uh there's a photo and graph that i found on the always accurate reddit so it has to be true yeah. absolutely i saw somebody in the chat said it's just swamp gas <laughs> <laughs> weather balloon it's a weather balloon yeah this brings up a, a good point she said you guys probably already discussed this but i remember harp yes we were talking about a harp and she mentioned blowing a hole in the end zone and the ozone people being reprimanded driving cars putting Hopes uh, uh, in the ozone in the 90s. You know, I, 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 the reason I threw that up there, uh, that's Jenny Barger, Joe Barger's uh, wife. Joe's going to be a guest on my live stream with Jenny on Saturday, by the way, everybody. Wonderful. Joe put down the, the dog man from his truck. The reason I bring that up is because you see, and somebody else brought it up as well, uh, you know, them spraying the chemtrails all the time. And I, I've sent pictures of some of my buddies, some of you guys. I think Drew, I sent it to you. Yeah, I had those are that crazy different ones. My wife was like, "Man, you are just a conspiracy nut." And then one day, me, my wife, and my daughter were in the backyard. There were literally seven, between seven to ten jets at the same time, shook, 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 just spraying everywhere. And even my wife, who just doesn't get into that, was like, 
you know, like, man, I, I'm having a trouble of like not paying attention to that. There's they're they're doing something up there. Why do they do it every day? You go out, sometimes it's between 9 a.m. and like say 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. They are crisscrossing the sky. Oh, yeah. My question is, is there a hole in our ozone? Are they spraying this stuff because it has like aluminum in it and things like that? Maybe to again refract the sun or not coming through or, or hurt. Or is there another reason? Is there a celestial body that's starting to come into? You always see videos of people saying, well, there's the moon over there. Then what's that right there? We got two things we're showing. Or there's the moon during the day right there. But what's that over there? And they show two different things. It's, you know, you hear like about Nirabu and, and other celestial bodies in our, our, in our, in our uh, solar system that, that we're not supposed to know about. So two things to kind of, you know, chew on and marinate. Now, there, there was a gentleman that I was just uh, watching recently talking about, um, uh, we'll, we'll say contrails versus chemtrails, okay? And the most educated person I've ever seen who broke it all down, and he's like, like it's all about wording. As soon as you mention chemtrails, everybody thinks you're a nut. But contrails mm -hmm. exist. But he's like, no, they're exactly the same thing. It's not one is different, one is the other. Um, he talked about weather conditions that actually make them stay around longer. And, and the, they know how to avoid that. They know actually how to avoid that. But by testing, and, and it's in the fuel, it's not like you have separate, you know, they show those pictures of those, um, those airplanes with those tanks within them. And they're like, yeah, these are your chemtrail planes. No, they're not. Like, like th this guy was very thorough in his investigation he explained what those were those are ballast tanks that they use to test out every new airplane to ensure that you know it it is able to maintain a fly nicely with these large tanks that represent large people within that are moving around now but he broke it down really really good and i actually want to try getting him on my show and he he, he at first was like no there, there's no such thing in the beginning until he he dove down deep and he was able to actually come out and say yeah no they're they're actually changing the weather he also talked about the cloud seeding by actually putting in and this is a study they did when 911 happened what did they do to all the planes they grounded, grounded them. Ev they grounded every single plane while this happened certain scientists decided that this is a perfect time to um to measure the temperatures to see what is different in temperatures they said without the consistent uh haze or clouds that are being produced by these uh by these planes that the daytime temperature was exactly the same okay there was no difference in the daytime temperature but the nighttime temperature without these artificial cloud cover actually dropped much further so what those clouds are doing they're actually keeping in the heat within so it's like a blanket. What you're doing is you're creating a blanket. So you're not reflecting the sun. The sun is still getting in, but you're actually not allowing the heat to escape. So that, now, that that's something I've, I've yeah. seen. Just to just to touch on, you know, uh, maybe to uh, you know touch on another part of this. I've seen uh, a documentary where they have had multiple ex pilots who have flown uh, jets, commercial jets that have had everything ripped out. And I know you said that they're ballast tanks. That mm. could be disinformation because we have had, there are also videos of people who are to the pilots at times unknowingly videoing the, the uh, cockpit. And some of them have actually got a uh, video of the, the, uh, electronic display with an actual button that says M trail right there on it. Some of these Pike X pilots have given their, their, uh, you know, their, their firsthand knowledge right on video and in, in front of Congress. And they have videos of this online that have said, I flew for, you know, TW or whoever they flew for. And we were told at specific times to hit these buttons that have this chemical in it. And people have tested them that have, you know, noxious gases and aluminum things that get in our water supply and our food supplies. And they have said we 100% uh, were told to to fire these things at whatever point and that they 
do have some type of chemical in them. And I, I mean, you know, take it for what it's worth. These videos are there. You can look them up. They're legitimate. Um, you know, so you have one side that says yes. You have the other side that says no. You know, who's telling the truth? I, I, I don't know. Well, as soon as you, if you call it stratospheric engineering, you know, then it, it's, that's exactly what it really is. And, you know, that's, that's what exactly what it is. And based on everything that you just said, that I'm leading uh, myself to believe here that that is 100% an effort to create man-made global warming. Mm -hmm. Like what else? Like there's no other reason why you would trap heat like that. I I, I agree. I agree. And but the the issue is, and everybody's like, well, no one would do this on purpose. They're doing this out of you know, like that's not what they're doing. They're doing it on not on purpose. Well, I'm like, yeah, there's a lot of people who think that what they're doing is right and what is what is good, but in in essence, they're creating something worse, and and they're kind of falling into the quagmire of what this is. Scott, That's my thought. I was taking say good night to my wife, Stacy. Thank you for helping. She's got to get up and work in the morning. So thank you for helping us out. Tonight, right. Thank you. Yeah. Stacey. Yeah. yeah okay. Of course. Now I, I, okay. I'm just going to circle back. I have those, I have some pictures that I'm going to pull up for uh, that city in the sky. I kind of found some more pictures. Well, um, or at least I thought I had more. Okay, I got. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna share my screen here, and we can uh, we can do this. Mm -hmm, here we go. So here he, here's one here. Okay. So you can okay, see so there's some built. You, I I know it's not as clear. You can see some buildings down below here, so you mm -hmm. can see how much higher this is. Mm -hmm. So there's buildings with some cranes on them in this location. And this is what this is here. So is there is there any kind of like explanation trying to be made for this photo anywhere? Yeah, there were um, some of them was um, and uh, Eclipse Truth. I will get, we will get to that definitely. Um, that the, some of the explanations was just that um, it was a, a optical illusion from a city you know, X amount of miles away and they had some, you know, just like, you know, never a straight answer always has these crazy, super long explanations of, of why this isn't, why that isn't that. I forget the, the exact detail, but it was, you know, it was humidity and it was yeah. Uh, yeah. water and it was reflecting from the water and the humidity in the sky and the clouds showed a city that was like a hundred miles away. It looked to me like something, you know, like DARPA or whatever, they're using the collider and they might be just like, you know, they said they bring other dimensions or maybe you're seeing something from, you know, a parallel world or dimension kind of coming through. Lando Calrissian was waiting for <laughs> Han Solo's arrival in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And here's uh, here's another picture actually here if you want to share that one, Matt. Um, if you want to pop that up on the screen. So Yeah, and it doesn't match that at all. No. I mean no, not at all. So again, That's you right. guys take this, you know, with a grain of salt, take it for what it's worth. Look at what is below it. That is not a reflection of what is below it. Um, I've seen video uh, of actual what was going on. People screaming, you know, going, I said, I'm sorry, there was too much detail. It literally looked like, again, you know, like a, 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 a cloud city. You know, you bring up Lando Calrissian, it truly looked like there was a city floating in the clouds. It was a little too much for me to, to buy that that was, you know, a, a reflection from a hundred miles away of this city somewhere else in China. It just it didn't make sense to me. I agree. I agree. Can can I jump back? I have something just to to 
to think about for the do sure. the directed energy weapons yeah. as to why they do it because them. i had something i want to add to that too so go ahead okay jump back. so one of the biblical things is why the sky or the firmament is blue is because god knew that there was no way you know that uh but if the sky was blue that these directed energy weapons would not be able to cut through. That is a theory of the religious side. So something to think about as to, you know, we're not able to bust through blue. And if you want to talk about, you know, biblical theories of the firmament, well, the firmament is blue. Just something to think about. JC. Yeah, I want that. I wonder why well, I want to go back to the dues because in 2019, um, you know, with the conflict happening between like Libya, Turkey, Lebanon, and those areas. Um, Turkey had actually utilized for the first time a microwave weapon. So this is not a laser weapon, no beams. This is something that's unseen to the trained eye. You know, you're not going to, you're not going to know when this is coming for you. Uh, they had, used it at a uh, at August 2019 in a combat between military forces in Libya and Turkey um they had used this microwave energy weapon on to the well it was to disable vehicles so it disabled cars trucks tanks things like that so it wasn't like they used the microwave beams to melt the vehicles or anything but we're one step now towards how do you concentrate these microwave beams and now, boom, everybody in the city's melted or everybody in the city is cancer, actually, you know. Wow. If, Turkey's do if Turkey's doing it, I'm sure every other country on the planet with a greater military might probably already has right. it figured out. <laughs> Agreed. I agree with you, JC, 100%. Um, Rye, if you could go to our inner circle, uh, Eclipse Truth has been mentioning this for a while here. I just wanted to throw this up. Um, she had mentioned uh, that they uh, said that it was a weed grow everywhere, start off in the distance. And again, this is Jenny Barger, uh, Joe Barger's wife. They, you know, he's a truck driver. They drive all over America. She has a picture of, of, of the sky that was turned purple. Um, and, and it's very interesting because I've seen a lot of videos of, of, of purple skies in the middle of the night that light things up. Really, it is pretty incredible. I just wanted to throw that up there uh, just to get the mind thing. And now there have been occasions that you have seen these, these purple lights that are, you know, getting bright and getting behind behind clouds like there's actually something back there that's causing these lights but this is you know her picture i've seen many many others taken uh, uh videos on youtube and this is something is causing these lights at night you know get you thinking well, what the heck on uh, on earth or not from earth and, and, and what, what was she saying that they said it was uh, weed grow. Uh, we saw this one in P PA. People said it was a weed grow, but it was everywhere. Eclipse Truth, if you could elaborate what you mean by weed Like they're grow. growing pot? I I'm not <laughs> like, sure. Those are the, is that what we're talking about? <laughs> I'm not sure. If, uh, if you could let us know, Jenny, uh, what, what you're referring to. And she said this was day glow. Um, that, I mean, you see lights on. I mean, that's the, I've seen these at night. You see headlights on there. Um, I mean, now, just lighting everything up. I, I would say that sometimes in the winter, and if there's snow out and it's snowing or you have some heavy snow clouds, uh, there's ice crystals in the air. Um, any any lights in the area gets reflected and it can light up like, like really, really bright. I've never seen pink or something, but I've seen like a, a lot of like yellowish, orangish glow, but that is from the nearby city that it's kind of reflecting off of. And it would light up the whole area to, to a very extreme, but I don't, I've never seen yeah. purple. Mm -hmm. Now she's yeah, saying is... like a greenhouse with pink lights. I've seen that, but I guess when you guys said weed grow that she said, yes. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I don't know, you know, if they're growing large amounts of, 
marijuana somewhere. They're just utilizing certain color insane lights. Insane amounts of marijuana, just a giant yeah. pink light. I don't know, <laughs> but you know, I have seen, like I said, uh, you can go on YouTube and, and they have clouds, something about clouds, and it's 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 you know getting brighter goes away brighter or something and so, hello ernie davio ernie just popped into the end of the chat what's up brother um i don't know it's it's pretty crazy man you you see these different colored lights that pop up at night and something is causing them you know you, you know what this really reminds me of and this is totally off topic of course it's me so i'm gonna go way off way off here uh this reminds me of the album cover of one of my favorite albums loveless by my bloody valentine from 1991 <laughs> <laughs> that, was that, was, that was the first thing that popped in my head <laughs> i was thinking like something like body snatchers or something or war of the world no. maybe it also kind of vaguely resembles uh what the sky was doing you know last i believe was it last summer when like all of Canada was on fire and yes. all of the uh, effects were kind of tripping down into the United the States? The haze. Yeah, the New York City haze and that. I'm curious when this photo Rye. was taken and, and where. Well, whether a resident Canadian comment on that. Hey, uh, uh, Jenny, where it. exactly did you say this picture was taken again? Do, do, do. Yeah, I went PA. I went PA. Hey, Ernie. I was in Pennsylvania. Okay, so I, when I those Ernie. when those fires were occurring, we were getting tons of really bad haze, but we didn't have any any lights like that that were associated with it. And what I can say is that skies like that were popping up in the New York area, and it was like often like kind of lambasted because a radio show that I listen to one of the producers is deep into conspiracies and all of the personalities on it uh, spent the entire summer like making fun of him for believing this stuff but the skies were absolutely uh, kind of lit up like that during certain days when Canada was on fire and there were a plethora of conspiratorial reasons behind it that were swept under the rug uh, so that's really interesting that you that you said that that was in pennsylvania channel man is actually joe barger uh so hey joe he's coming here we didn't see a grow light source at all and this expanded from nothing and transformed the whole sky near harrisburg pa again um you know what i've seen on on, on videos is something extremely close, if not exact, from different videos in different areas all over the world of this purple light that, that will, you know, emanate, it'll, it'll get bright, it'll, it'll radiate, um, and usually behind cloud cover, something is causing that to happen. Uh, For you know, sure. It, you know, what, what is it? A, is it a ship? Is it Project Blue Beam? You know, a, a, Something's going on, but this definitely happens all over the world. And uh, let's see, where where did Cheppy go? Cheppy made a, a comment about Red Sky. Now, I'm old enough to remember, and if anybody can uh, make hair, I caught a, a blood red sky a few, a few years back in Dundalk, Mary, Maryland, when I was very young, I will never forget it was daytime, and, and I'm sure there's people uh, in the in the chat that will remember this. I remember there was an eclipse. It was a blood red eclipse during the day, and I'll never forget it as long as I live. Everything, the sky, everything, as, as it was like you were in a movie, was red. The, the light wow. only emanated everything. And I remember I got on my bike, my Schwinn bike. It was a red bike. And I wanted to go check it out. And 
my mom's like, don't leave, don't let him leave. My cousin Danny was there and he like ran, you know how in the Schwins they had that little bar that went up in the back and he just grabbed it and stopped me. And I was like, I just want to go see this eclipse, this red eclipse, but everything. It was like you were wearing red sunglasses during the day. If anybody remembers that, please, you know, speak up. I'll never forget that as long as I live. Cool. That's interesting. It, 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 go ahead. Uh, so, JC, we're going to say something. No, I was just trying to think back to my childhood. I know red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky red morning, the- sailors take warning. Sailors uh, warning. Yeah. Arr. Now, you know what? You know what, though? And like, <laughs> maybe this was something for a different episode, something we already did. But do you guys remember when you were young, the sound of like the quails or whatever they were? Like after a rain, they'd be like, hoo, 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 hoo. Do you I ever do. hear those anymore? No, I can't say that I do. But I like I don't or maybe maybe I'm just not paying attention as much anymore. But I was thinking about that this morning and I was like, you know, I never hear that like who 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 you know noise. You're right. Anymore. That, that is that is uh strange. I, I can't think of that <laughs> myself. We'll have to do another episode on that. Another Next episode week. on it. Woo, 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 woo. Yeah. Um, bird, bird noises. S- since we're talking about things coming out of the sky or, or different sky things, I, I had a strange uh, encounter, like uh, kind of taken in a different direction. But when I was flying into Mexico, one of the times, um, I'm not going to give the context out to it, but I kind of felt that I should look out the window and this isn't my picture but this is exactly what I saw falling from the sky at a free fall, not like a force, not like plummeting, but at a free fall. I'm just going to share this, but why am I having issues? Share screen window here. So this is what I saw falling outside of my window um, of my plane. And it was about maybe like five, 500 feet out from like, okay. Was it a comet? It was fa- like I would think a comet would be like like plummeting. This was like like gently falling, and and this is a someone says it's a flare. Okay, so this was taken as a flare falling, and it's exactly what it looked. It was green, and it was falling and leaving like tracers coming off of it. But like we're like I don't know how high do the planes fly? Fly like twenty thousand, thirty thousand feet in the air, um, and and I. And, and okay, so this was the the context as to why I looked up. So I was bringing a lot of stuff into Mexico because I was moving to Mexico, and I had a lot of stuff that would be a real pain in the butt to go through customs. And I said, okay, I need a sign because when you when you come into Mexico, you press a button. You either get red means you're going to go through your stuff, or you get green means they're going to you get to go. Um, so I said, I need a sign that I'm going to get green. And then I look out the window. I'm not even talking like five minutes. It was like two minutes. I look out the window and this thing fall. This green flare comes falling from the sky, which I thought was pretty, uh, I don't know, synchronistic. But yeah, this was really crazy seeing this thing fall out of the sky when I'm flying in a, we're flying in a plane at like 30,000 feet. So I don't know. Has anybody else ever seen like this? It could be in like a green meteor. It very much could have been, but really interesting. And it was, like I said, about 500 feet away from the plane. I have not personally seen that before. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool. I've seen yeah. meteors that fall, at di- like without cascading, but kind of fall directly down like that. And uh, the first time I saw it, I, I was like blown away by it. So I looked into it, and I guess there is a type of meteorite um, dissension that looks like that that has a name and uh, I completely forgot about it because until this moment I have never needed to bring it up in conversation again, but <laughs> there was actually um, like forums dedicated to it because of how um, often it happens, but it was not green like that in any way. It looked like your kind of general run of the mill uh, kind of yellowy tail when it fell okay yeah this, this was this, as that is not a comment she does not believe that it's yeah, a comment. right I, I don't i don't think so either just because it like i know you're saying it fell like but i, I don't see why something would fall at like a just a you leisurely 
space crash, like maybe you know, a, a yeah. moon, could it be something you know, like a, a satellite or something like that falling? To me, anything coming down from space is going to have the trail behind yeah. it, right? And I don't mean Which just like just what's does. burning off here. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. I mean, like, but there's like a dust trail, and and that, and this, I don't know. It seems like something maybe launched from Earth. <laughs> Yeah, it, 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 but, but being up as high, yeah, and, and I agree. But being up as high as I was, that's true. And, you were up high. You were in a plane, and being in a airplane, you know, like that's a um, a traffic route. You know, like a, a what do they yeah. call it? Like a flight path. You know, why are they? Why is something flying? And this was over the mountains in Mexico as well, too. So this is hmm. it's weird, very weird, but kind of cool kind of cool especially when you're asking yeah. for a sign or like you know i don't i want to get green and which i did <laughs> and then you got it yeah. did, did anybody see audacious amber's comment in here about the night um the third night after lockdown in 2020 i did not yeah so she said did anybody right yeah there it is yeah uh, about arcs of light taking off into the sky after lockdown i did not see that but it makes you. I wouldn't have really been. It's crazy. I mean, I wouldn't even be in. I'm trying to think. Like lockdown was March 2020. I'm in Cleveland, so I'm. I, we had snow. I know there was snow because I remember they had like an aerial footage of like all the highways empty, and there was snow. So I probably wouldn't have been outside to notice anything like that at that time. I would have um, been watching The Circle and Love Is Blind. Because that's where <laughs> Tiger King Wait, is, is the circle that social media. <laughs> yeah, I watch a lot of garbage. That's disgusting. <laughs> but that's interesting. I wonder if anybody, if anybody else has just seen anything like that, you know, after lockdown, um, you know, put that in the chat. Where is White Marsh? Did we ask that? I, I, I don't know. Yeah. So where, where is White Marsh? Uh, Amber can tell us. Uh, and Ernie, yeah, like it does. It did look like a flare. It really did look like a flare. But at that height, who's dropping a flare? You know, for what purpose? And White who's, who's flying above us? Baltimore. Baltimore? Baltimore? Yeah. Baltimore. 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 I fell asleep at an Orioles game. Baseball is kind of boring, in my opinion. <laughs> no, I love baseball, but I fell yeah. asleep at an Orioles game. But I'm it's saying it is boring. It's, it's boring. <laughs> it's easy to fall asleep <laughs> at an Orioles game. Yeah, baseball, baseball, uh, uh, golf. Come on, be nice. I'm a baseball. Hey, I boy. know my one of my one of my best friends, a guy I call one of my best friends. I call games with. Uh, he is huge into baseball so hey everybody to their own but for me it's a good way to put me to sleep yeah. i grew up in pittsburgh in the 90s and 2000s so mm -hmm. it's impossible to get into baseball at all because we had the pirates <laughs> at the absolute Ooh, worst, worst, worst too, baby. So, <laughs> sorry so pj can you put pj's uh comment yeah. up because this is something i personally this is something i personally saw myself Hold you on, talked on. about this on our live stream. Yes, I I saw a airplane frozen in frozen in mid space. So PJ's uh, comment is just like the third from the bottom. It's 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 fairly recent. All right, hold on. Oh, PJ. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I was in Calgary, we were driving, and I was with my wife and my daughter. Um, I remember we we're going to go buy some luggage and there was an airplane and it wasn't moving. It was stationary in one position and it literally was not moving. And I know once there was all, well, you know, it was moving at a slur. No, no, no. <clears throat> like I was watching the building. It was in line with and it was not moving from that position. Yeah. And granted, we were changing. So we're changing kind of kind of uh, locations. And it, it stayed there. Then all of a sudden it was like, poof, then it was gone. Like it was gone fast at that point. So it was extremely strange. And like I said, me and my wife and my daughter was five or six at that time. So she probably doesn't remember it. But me and my wife, we saw this plane paused in midair. That's the best way I can yep. say it. Paused or at like, at like, like very, very, very 
like at a much slower rate than it should than it shouldn't be. Yeah, I've you know I've seen a lot of videos too of that where there are cars driving and you can clearly see that the plane is like hovering. Yes. And I've seen the explanation being that planes are capable of doing that whenever they're waiting for um, a landing sequence. That's been what? the explanation I've seen. That's the dumbest explanation I've ever heard. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't make, Hey, that's not my explanation. I have, I have a lot of dumb things to say, but that's not one of them. <laughs> No, I know it's not you. I'm just saying that that explanation <laughs> right. is like, is it a helicopter? Is it a blimp? Is it a Zeppelin? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not even going to try. I don't know aerodynamics and things like that. I already fell with the lasers, so I'm just going to let this one go. <laughs> Drew, now, I'll hand it off to you. He's our aerodynamic it, expert. It, it, if planes can <laughs> hover, then why do they follow the sky and crash? Because they couldn't hover Mic drop. Mic drop. Yes. Exactly. Or, they lost, you, you they see, lost the hoverability. You do see these videos of people driving up these planes that are basically sitting in air. Now you get the explanation of, you know, they're they've lowered the 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 power of their their engines enough, and that the crosswind or the wind coming at them is just kind of keeping them in in you know space. But it, it really doesn't make much sense when you think of the power of these airplanes, the heft, the weight of them. It's just, it's strange. It has to be quite a strong uh, like, wind that would I, keep that. I totally agree. And like, I've flown a lot and I always, well, not always, but. All right. See you, right? Oh, no. <laughs> well, he talked a little bit too much about the truth. Yeah, well, somebody was... shut him up for a second. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's just like he's that hovering in, just yeah, like he's that hovering in formation yeah. waiting for landing. Okay. Right. So, for a second. Oh, I was like, why you guys are all freezing? And then all of a sudden my screen goes. I'm like, oh man. Yes. Yeah. So like I always sit and look out the window. I've never seen the ground stop. The ground is always like you know, mm -hmm. never, ever, ever. And I've flown in some really crazy high wind situations, really crazy where like in smaller planes where the whole runway is, I, I'm, I can't see the runway anymore because the plane is moving so much, you know, so crazy. So, yeah. And there's uh, Joe there. Barger. He's a pilot. too. He's never been able to hover a fixed wing aircraft. Okay. There you go. Well, yep. Right from a pilot. So, yeah. Done. I wanted, I wanted to real quick, take this opportunity one more time since, you know, I got 45 people here. Uh, Paranormal Roundtable is a new sponsor of Planet 412. I just want to, they're my first one. Tuesdays from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Central, one podcast on YouTube. On Thursday, uh, Josh Turner is on Blondes and Booze, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Central. On Friday, 8.30 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. Central, they have guests. I will be a guest. Rye will show up as well, I believe, Friday. On uh, Saturday, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Central, they will be talking about the Alien Agenda Roundtable Discussion. And on Sunday night, 7.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Central, they'll be retelling encounters. And then again, just to let everybody know, all proceeds to any of my live streams on this channel will be going to uh, purchasing new equipment that is majorly, majorly needed. Rye is the one who's throwing up the images and things on here. I can't do that. Um, one computer already died. I'm using my daughter's Chromebook, which people are shocked I'm even able to do things with. Not much <laughs> anymore. I don't even have a, uh, a, a microphone. So um, I'm going to throw up a, a link to Amazon where we have a Planet 412. Uh, other channels have told me to do this. So if you can help out, I'd appreciate it. In, in the meantime, yeah. Uh, Matt, are we... I thought uh, Josh had asked us to come on on Saturday to be part of that roundtable. Is that... Uh... It, I know Friday for a fact he asked me to guest host. He might have... That might have been when he asked both of us to come for the Alien Agenda one. Yeah. Um, he asked me to, to co-host with him on Friday. I guess cool. we'll have to look that up. Yeah, and, I'll, and, we'll have to contact yeah. him. But but yeah, but Josh, him, Josh him, is great. Him. Yeah. He's been a, a big help to, to the channel. Um, 
Um, uh, yes. And so, you know, I, I think we're starting to come to an end here, but before we do that, you know, make sure everybody in the chat, make sure you go hit that like button, whichever live stream you're following, hit that like button, you know, subscribe to that channel comment. It really helps. It really helps us all. Um, subscribe to these guys here, these guys channels, the Sasquatchers, you know, you just got to subscribe to one because they're, they're two in one. You get two for the price of one for the Sasquatchers. I think that's a great deal. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I would. I'd return both of them, but... <laughs> I would, I would return one of them. you guys right now, by the way? What's that, sir, Matt? What's coming up for, for the Sasquatchers right now? Yeah, what do you guys got going on? Uh, so yesterday we put out our most recent episode. It's the first of two with Brandon Wright from Tinfoil Tales. Uh, really, really interesting stuff. He's a real cool guy. We actually did a share cast evening where we spent about four hours with him between his show and ours. And we just talked about a lot of, uh, paranormal stuff, obviously. So if you haven't listened to that, I, uh, implore you to check it out. It's the first of two. And the way that I like to cut them is right in the middle of a sentence so that you have to come back. So just be prepared for that. Awesome. Awesome. Ryan, oh, um, yes. So I can see the Eclipse Truth is asking if I have a channel. I do. It is if you go right here. So you just look for Codega Codex of Curiosities. That is my channel. Um, so this week I am releasing my Walter Bosley interview, and that is Disneyland Portals, Time Travel, Vortexes, Really interesting stuff. Um, my interview that I just did on Thursday that's going to be releasing um, on YouTube on May, that is probably one of the most high. I, I talked to uh, Matt about that interview. It's extremely high strangeness. And not only that, when I'm editing the audio, it totally was like it totally shut down. I had to redo the whole audio um though most of the stuff did save but i still had to redo a lot of it now that i'm uploading the video to it i'm having nothing but issues i'm like what is going on like this i've never had this this many issues like i'm gonna have to redo not uh, not re-upload i gotta i gotta delete the the video that i created i have to create a whole new one again like I do have all the raw material, so I'm going to have to redo it all and see if I can uh, make it work. So that video, May 2nd, is and I, I'm calling it so so far, you know, the what is it? The Michigan nightmare or something like that. It's uh, it, it's a pretty the hooded uh, the hooded entity Michigan nightmare. It's crazy. It's crazy. So if you're from Michigan, I highly recommend that uh, that episode. I want to jump in real quick and mention uh, Far Out Folklore every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Time on the Sasquatchers podcast uh, YouTube channel. We uh, have a really another really good one this week, and I think they continuously get better as I do them. This will be episode five, so 12 p.m. Friday. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, and let's just see here. One second. Where am I at? Where am I at? I am two two subs away from 500 so if you haven't subbed please sub to the to get me yeah. that hit that 500 which I'm, is a magic i'm number. subscribing <laughs> i'm three and then andrew i'm four no. <laughs> absolutely yeah. please everybody go over and subscribe to both rye get him over 500 go over to Sasquatch's paranormal podcast they're doing an absolutely great job over there um yeah. And it subscribe to Matt's channel too, if you're not. You know, if you're yeah. Yeah. if you're not, head over to Planet 412 or right here and, and subscribe. If you guys are watching, I, I would greatly appreciate it. I have uh, memberships as JC's thrown up some stuff in there. I added a Patreon as well. Uh, Fantastic. The and and uh, you know, I also have you know going across the bottom is the wish list. I also have it on my community page. Uh, I'm going to add it to the description on my channel as well. And I would just appreciate if everybody could help. It'll just better the channel. Um, again, I, that wasn't my idea. That was a number of other channels ideas. Just saying, <laughs> you know, that's how people get their, their channels uh, to, to get better. And that's my goal. I've gotten quite a few complaints in the comments about my, my, my quality of my sound and everything I, you know, so. 
it is what yeah. it is. I wanted to thank everybody uh, for being here tonight. We had a, a really good group. Um, you know, all the questions and everybody that that jumped on. I want to thank everybody. You know, thank you to Rye and Codegas, uh, Codex of Curiosity, Sasquatch's Paranormal Podcast. Um, Saturday, everybody, like I said, uh, live stream on Planet 412. We will have Joe Barger, his, his wife Jenny will also be joining. So jump in. I have some new uh, some new stuff coming up, some new narrations, some other uh, formats that will be jumping up. And if I get that new computer, I'll be able to get all these interviews and stuff up. Um, is there anything else that you guys haven't let everyone know that uh, is going on? Um, nothing. Other than exact same things, you know, I I popped up a Patreon, I popped up a, a Printify store that can always be found in in my comments. I mean, not my comments in my um, in my show notes for any of my episodes. So if you like my my logo, you know, you can get a T shirt, you can get stickers, um, you know, it's cool, it's cool stuff, and you can get magic yeah, candles, you can get candles. Absolutely. We'll all be adding a merch store. We are actually talking about as well, adding a merch store for our, our, uh, our town hall session. So that's something uh, in the near future that we would like to do. So uh, a lot of good things in, in the near future. And we could not do this uh, without all of you guys being here. Five. So. I hit five. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, I hit my magic five. Woo! Yeah, I it appreciate has been that. Growing quickly, and and Sauce Watchers are right behind. They are up and comers, and everybody, uh, thank you for you know supporting everybody, supporting me, supporting Rye. Get over there to Sauce Watchers and get them uh, more subs. It's coming. It's coming. We have a great new uh, group of of youngins and and uh, new channels that are are uh, popping up. We also have uh, a group channel for the paranormal or supernatural town hall session that Rye was uh, nice enough to donate and, and throw Thank it you, to the group. Uh, awesome. you know, he was, he was gifted that. Uh, and by Nelly, uh, Nelly Turner from a uh, paranormal round table. And, and that was for Rye and Rye because he has a big heart through it for, for the group. So <laughs> thank you to Rye as well. And again, thank you, everybody. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you. And we will see we'll you next. the link for that. God bless. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Wait, hold up one second. Go ahead. We're, we will stay. Yeah, no, thanks, I'm just guys, putting this supernatural. I, I actually hit 501 now. So I'm already, I'm already past that 500. So thank you. Awesome. Congratulations. Town Hall Sessions yes. Facebook group. I was just putting the link for the Supernatural Town Hall Sessions Facebook group in here. We're good. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks so much. And good night, everyone. God bless. There it is. Take care. Thanks for squatching. Ooh, I like Thank you, Watch everybody. You good night, everybody. I'm going to stop this banner real quick. There it is. Head over there. And we will see you all later, everybody. God bless. Thanks again. Thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe as it greatly helps out the channel. I'll see you next time on Planet 412.